Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Entrepreneur Showcase Series brought to you by Petrania Media LLC and Parkway Media Partners. I'm your host, Petrania Poonswan, and on this show today, we have a very special lady in the studio. Her name is Sarah Cook, and she is the president of Nannies and Grannies based right here in Southern Nevada. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hi, Petrani. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me today. It's so great to have you. And, you know, I actually have heard of nannies and grannies before, even though I don't have kids. I have lots of friends who are in need of services that you offer, but... Nannies and Grannies, I think is such a great name, and we want to talk a little bit more about how it's not just about babysitting, which when people hear this, they think of that, you do a lot more than that. So we're going to go into this. But first of all, Sarah, talk to us about the origin of Nannies and Grannies, because this really has been a family business for you. It really is, and to carry on the legacy is such a special thing mm-hmm. to be able to do. I, I really, I picked my parents well. Yeah. My mom was <laughs> such an amazing businesswoman. She laid such a great foundation. She really, um, it was important to her to find, um, to be able to provide care parallel mm-hmm. to that of the family when the family is not able to be present. Right. Um, she knew a lot of working family families that needed good, solid child care. Um, and so she really wanted to create a business where she was educating nannies and sending them to the home, not just plopping them in front of the television, but doing fun activities and, and really um, bringing learning on board. Mm-hmm. Um, so she... And this was back in the 80s, right? Remind me your mom's name again. Carol. Carol, Carol. Hale. Mm-hmm. And Carol, we actually have a picture of you and her. And Carol actually passed away a few years ago. But again, she's started this back in, I believe, 1987. 1987, yep, we're going on 37 years strong. Wow. So it's been it's been amazing. And my mom was such an amazing businesswoman, but mm-hmm. it was also really fun for me to come on and take over because yeah. I was able to kind of give this business a kick into, into this century right. and, and use some social media and get mm-hmm. us branded and get us more well-known with the casinos and, and the sports teams in town. So it's been a really fun meeting of the minds. My, my dad was really proud of us both because mm-hmm. we got to have kind of the you know mature approach and then the young, fun approach. Yeah, because you worked together for, for quite a few years before she passed, right? We did. Yeah. She, and she was still a consultant. I mean, up until the very end, I'd be picking up my mom instead of Googling it. How do I do this, mom? <laughs> right. <laughs> and so she started this back in the days, obviously. And tell me about that, because you remember back in the 80s in Vegas was a different world, right? Not just in the working world for women, but just the way this town operated. It really was. Yeah. It was, and, and my mom used to go on foot and make best friends with all the concierge mm-hmm. desks in town and just make sure that we were well known because at that time there was, it was unheard of to yeah. have a, a nanny agency that was trusted. And it wasn't known as a kid's town. People don't usually bring their kids to Vegas, right? right and right. then you kind of offer something when people are like, well, can, if I do, what do I do? Exactly. How did they even hear about you guys back in the days? You know, my mom just started, you know, going to a lot of the concierge association meetings and she really started to kind of brand us as an agency that mm. would come direct to the hotel rooms right. where we would provide safe and reputable child care services. She was really big on screening and vetting and making sure that we had really well-rounded people that mm-hmm. really, you know, truly care about children. Um, they would drag a literal suitcase and they still do behind them of different fun age-appropriate games, toys and activities yeah. to, you know, to really make it a fun experience for the kiddos Um, and then you're right Vegas did become a lot more family friendly and Mm -hmm. there became you know water parks and theme parks and amusement parks and uh, the arcades so our nannies are you know have the special um, liability licensing to be able to take the children on outings which is really fun Uh, to make it a great experience for kiddos too and I think that is such so important to kind of peace of mind for people coming to town and knowing that there is a safe service right because especially people who've never been to Vegas before they're like is something like this out there and when you make that relationship with the concierge in the hotels, they know that this is the trustworthy service. Absolutely. And my mom was so smart with the way that she set it up because Mm -hmm. she knew that she couldn't just you know, find your, you know, next door neighbor babysitter. She knew that she had to create a proprietary nanny training program mm-hmm. and we're actually the only state licensed right, I saw proprietary that. nanny training program yeah. in the state of Nevada, which is um, an actual accreditation for nannies to be certified to become nannies that, you know, go through child development training. They mm. have CPR, they have background checks, they have 
um, you know, seven modules that they go through, you know, safe sleep for infants, so many things that are so critical and important for them to learn. And the biggest thing that I just makes me smile when I think of my mom is just stressing that, you know, play is really the work of children. Mm. So, you know, not just plopping them in front of screen time, but really getting down on their level and engaging and doing science experiments or doing arts and crafts. Yeah. And that's what, you know, makes makes children flourish. And I think that you, that you mentioned the nanny education. I know we have some pictures of some of the ladies who work for you, who are part of this process and been part of this family. And I really like that you really emphasize the fact that this is the women run business, right? It started with your mom, but you're helping all these women kind of grow into their roles as, as, as nannies here in town. We are. We, we are completely women run, uh, run administratively in the office. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I would say 90% of our team are all women. Um, we do have the occasional Manny that pops up and that's becoming more popular nowadays, <laughs> right, right, you know, yeah. and that's fun because it's fun to have a Manny that can go play sports with the, yeah. you know, young, younger boys. But, yeah. um, but we're really proud to be women run mm -hmm. and, and women owned. That's, that's just amazing. And, you know, and people think about nannies and grannies as, you know, the relationship you said you're building with a lot of the hotels here in town. And we actually have video of just, I mean, Easter just passed, right? We just had that holiday. And in a way, you're still kind of living your mom legacy um, when it comes to building those relationships. You're still going around to these hotels and, and, and making relationships with all these uh, hotel workers, right? Absolutely. Well, you know, t technology is wonderful mm. and it's great and it's gotten, you know, uh, us to leave our stamp and our brand on things. But yeah. I'm, I'm such a fan and I learned from my mom, grassroots marketing yeah. is just the way to go and mm -hmm. giving back to the community and showing your appreciation. So we make Easter baskets for the right. concierge. We yeah. we go and we deliver little goodies and, and we go and we say hi and we just thank them because without these amazing concierge teams, you know, they're really making this business um, available yeah. to tourists that come to town so that they know there is a reputable trace uh, safe service that they can trust. And you know, and, and what's great is your education educating these um, concierge workers because what you do is just more than just hey, here. So here's a nanny to come stay in the room for three hours, right? You offer all kinds of different services. And I really like that you do put um, that care into taking care of special needs clients. We do, that's and that's, that's another it. tribute to my mother. She yeah. really realized that the special needs uh, families and mm -hmm. community in Las Vegas was a community that was really um, not r receiving the care yeah. that they deserved. Yeah. A lot of special needs parents were nervous to even ask or, or, or mention yeah. that their children were special needs for fear that they would be turned down. Mm. Um, and my mother really made it you know, very apparent that we were the first special needs agency that would ex accept children with disabilities. Yeah. And I've really tried to keep that um, something that we are really proud of mm. and that we do take any child with special needs and we have the staff equipped to handle that. Yeah. And you know that just stepping outside the strip, there's so many families here just moving mm -hmm. to Southern Nevada and Las Vegas and looking for something like this. Because as you know, you know it's um, the headlines are out there that the the lack of um, you know certified healthcare providers and including childcare providers. And you've seen that right out in, the, in in the market, people really do need services like this. Oh, they sure do. And the su the, the supply, I mean, is, mm -hmm. is far less than the demand. I mean, mm. especially we. We're, we're so lucky we're endorsed by the sports teams in town and we mm. get to help um, you know a lot of families here in Las Vegas and our big thing is to make sure that we have the right nanny not the quickest nanny um, you know not just anybody but we have the right nanny and there really is a matchmaking element to it right. um, it really does you know it, it's very customized each family has a different set of search criteria that they may have that is important to them and it's our job as an agency to really help pinpoint that and mm -hmm. present them with what they deserve and Talk to me about the sports team factor because you do um, engage with the community in that way too. Are they looking for, you know, how, how are you working with them here in town? Well, we're really lucky. We do provide child care for the Golden Knights uh, directly at the games. Wow. We provide it to the players. They have a, a family room where the, the mothers... So for the players. For the players. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. So, so you know. don't think about that. Yes, when they're playing and right. they need someone to take care of their kids, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So they set up a fun little catered um, room for the for the mothers and their children. And the mothers can come and socialize, mm. but there's uh, always nannies on deck ready to jump oh, in and wow. help with the kiddos. I would not Because, you know, when you don't have kids, you don't think about that. But that's a big part of kids keeping the sports, now that we are a sports town, we need that to keep it running. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the Golden Golden Knights has been such a, a an amazing um, 
part of Nannies and Grannies, yeah. and they really do promote us because they trust us. Mm. And so now um, a lot of people, you know, we're in their newsletter, and they're telling you know all of their team team players yeah. about Nannies and Grannies. So it's it's really kind of just flourished. And just to think about that, I mean, being the, these sporting events, that's where families go. You know what oh, I mean? For sure. And that's where the, the great information that you're getting from going to these t these games, um, the fact that they have great child care on site. And that must be really fun for you to collaborate with teams like that. It is really fun. And yeah. it's so fun to get to know the players and these families. Mm -hmm. You know, the Raiders families are amazing too. And we're just, we're, we're right in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we 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 help everybody. We we love Las Vegas as a community. We really try to give back. We do a lot of charitable endeavors too. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were really big in charity. So um, you know, we, we nannies and grannies as a whole, we go down every Tuesday and we volunteer for the homeless communities and and, and put on a, a food kitchen. Yeah. Um, so we really we we help homeless youth in Nevada. We help veterans in um, in Las Vegas. So yeah. it's really important to me. My parents were so philanthropic. Um, so you know, just to to carry on that legacy is really special. And I want to talk about that because a lot of entrepreneurs that come on our show, we talk about running a business, you know, and how the challenges and, and their secrets to success and all that. But, you know, your dad actually started a charity called Seniors Charity, which we'll talk a little bit about that. But talk to me about that. Being an entrepreneur, you really, I mean, to make your nonprofit side successful, you do kind of have to run it as a business, like a business. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You really do. And my dad was so clever. You know, he was he was actually in uh, poker, and mm. he was a professional poker player. And so when he wanted to give back, he he really wanted to kind of bring poker up out of a, this CD, um, you know, kind of subject reputation. Reputation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to involve charity surrounding mm. poker. And so he created these poker tournaments where the rebuy. Uh, um, for any any tournament that somebody played would go directly to charity. Oh wow! And so my parents' dream was to build what's called a, ch a children's Lucatech library, and it's a special library with mm -hmm. very expensive toys that are geared towards special needs children right. to help to um, advance their motor skills mm -hmm. and different things. But regular families could not afford those yeah. types of toys. Mm -hmm. So my parents really wanted to um, be able to raise a ton of money, and they yeah. were able to do that through the poker world oh, wow. and give poker a, a, a different reputation for giving back. I love that. So Seniors Charity, talk to us about that because your dad started back in the 90s, but it's still going strong today, right? Yes, yes. I've always been on the board of directors. Mm -hmm. um, when my parents passed, it was really important for mm -hmm. me to keep that alive. Yeah. So every year we do multiple things to keep the Seniors Charities active. Mm -hmm. um, we just bought over um, 100 bikes for uh, t uh, children in Las Vegas. Um, every year we do something special to you know um, support families that might need so a little. So it said seniors charity, does it get geared to the whole family? Like talk to us about the mission and, and how can people help and support you? So my dad was very patriotic. Mm -hmm. It was really surrounding a lot of care for veterans initially. Right, right. But because my mom had such a love of children, it kind of just started to encompass the family as a mm -hmm. whole. So veterans, um, you know, seniors in the community. Mm -hmm. Seniors are really um, a, a, a demographic that, you know, sometimes goes uh, unnoticed mm -hmm. and under cared for. Right. So being able to send staff from nannies and grannies because not only do we handle child care but we handle companion care, oh, pet sitting, okay. um, housekeeping. There's so many different things under the domestic umbrella that we that we um, specialize in as our core services. Mm -hmm. We will send companion caregivers directly to veterans homes or seniors homes in the community that might not have family, that might need somebody to come and cook them a warm meal or take them to a doctor's appointment or maybe just sit and play a game of cards with them and have fun and just visit with them and yeah. Yeah. you know hear some of their stories um, so it's really important to us just to be able to provide that to people in the community yeah we're talking here with Sarah Cook and she's the president of nannies and grannies which started back in the 80s by her mom hence nannies and grannies right because she became a grandmother but you know you, this whole business idea of starting um, in your family is just so wonderful and um, Talk to me about the needs. How has that changed over the years? Obviously, more people now in the Valley, right? More families are moving in. But what have you, what have you noticed just growing up in this business and seeing how it's changed over the years? You know, I think families are really looking for nannies that will come and will educate their mm -hmm. children, not just um, the next door neighbor babysitter. They mm. really want a nanny that will come and bring something to the table. So, mm. you know, whether that's helping with, with homework or tutoring or, you know, 
building a curriculum, um, maybe even a homeschool assistant. We have get a lot of requests for families that are really interested in nannies with specialized skill sets. Yeah. Uh, other, you know, speaking other languages coming in and wow. a Spanish speaking nanny that can maybe teach the so kiddos So can people to... find that? Out? I want to pull up your website too in a little bit here just to show what people can get, but can people you know, you talked about the matchmaking process. Can they find all that information on your website and start that process from there? Absolutely, yeah. and our application, I mean, it asks a ton of questions about, mm-hmm. you know, what are what is your parenting philosophy? What, you know, what type of environment do you have for your children? Is it more Montessori and child-led or is it more uh, traditional um, and parent-led? Mm-hmm. Um, are you looking for, you know, do you, do you care if the nanny makes a fort in the living room and, and, and makes a mess but the kids are having fun? So do or- they put all that information on the website or do they call a number and then you go through a call? Like, how does this process work? They'll call us and we'll mm-hmm. set up a, a custom consultation, and then we'll send them an application to mm-hmm. become, um, you know, part part of uh, the nannies and grannies family. Yeah, and it will ask them a ton of questions about their family and what if they've ever had a nanny in the past, what their you know kind of expectations are and goals for right. having a nanny placement. Right. Um, and then we see that all the way through, and we present them with usually usually we screen over a hundred candidates wow. to set them up with around five to six solid interviews. Yeah. of people that meet their search criteria. So these are interviews in person or virtual? How are you making it work with just how busy families are now, right? We do a ton of Zoom meetings and virtual mm. meetings. Before mm-hmm. COVID, we, we really had a brick and mortar office that we'd bring a lot of families yeah. into. And it's that was fun, and I kind of miss it, you know, yeah. seeing people in person. But yeah. just the way that the world is, mm-hmm. you know, it has has gone. We do tons of virtual appointments because we're a national firm as well. So we mm-hmm. do placements all over the country, not just in Las Vegas. Oh wow! Um, so it's very important to have that virtual capability. Yeah, no, it's great. And you guys have really maintained a stellar reputation when it comes to safety and everything else around your service, right? We have. We are a five star agency. We have a completely accident free reputation. Mm. Um, I'm a mom too. I have an almost nine-year-old so mm-hmm. I am very particular about who we bring on board yeah. uh, we have a, a very long checklist that people have to go through before they ever even meet a family yeah. um, we're b- very big on making sure they're CPR certified that mm. their background checked that they have their child development training yeah um, and then you know we're, we're definitely interviewing they go through three personal interviews with my team alone before they're ever even you know sent to work with a family yeah. so we, uh, we were able to keep our reputation strong. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I think part a big part of what you do, and we want to talk a little bit about this, is the education process mm-hmm. for your nannies. Because you said you really kind of put a lot of that into it. So talk about this process. People are listening, and they're not looking for a nanny, but they want to be one or be part of this business. Um, what is uh, What do you do to get, get through there? Well, we actually do train nannies with no experience. If you have a, a love for children and you really you is know, it over eighteen? They have to like what's the age? We range do try like over, 21, over twenty-one. Just because of the casinos, you know, going God, into the casinos, it's kind of important for yeah, us yeah. to have you over twenty-one. Yeah. Um, but we have a lot of you know homemakers or mm. mothers that maybe you know are now looking for a, like a second a chance job. At, a, at a career or part-time job, yeah. and that's where the nanny training school comes into play because mm. somebody doesn't necessarily have to have experience; they just have to have a sincere and deep love for children Mm -hmm. and we can put them through our nanny training school and start them off and really kind of create you know the right mold the right nanny for each family. Are you the only school here in Nevada? We are. We're the only proprietary school in Nevada Um, and we're so excited we're launching our online school in 2025 which will make it so much easier for candidates all around the world to get certified. Um, We have a couple uh, little baby classes up now just for fun but we're really working hard to get that completely online. Yeah and you know and I think that's just so important We're, we're talking about the lack of child care providers to have this kind of access right for education for and then leads to job opportunities down the road absolutely and surprisingly Nevada is actually the strictest child care licensing laws in the entire country really so we follow you know Nevada child care licensing mm-hmm. laws to a T um, but then just me and my you know I, I'm, I'm very particular like I said so they have to jump through a lot yeah. of other certification processes just wow. to be with us and you know and, and leading into you know the educating the nannies and and really taking care of them you really do advocate for for their rights 
and people don't think about that or they don't talk about that. So talk to me about your efforts as a business in helping these nannies. We do. We really try to support nannies and advocate for nannies as well, mm -hmm. not just families. Um, we really believe in fair pay for nannies mm -hmm. and a fair wage. Yeah. Um, we also believe in guaranteed hours for nannies so mm -hmm. that, you know, if, if mom and dad don't necessarily need the nanny, the nanny should still be able to rely and receive her yeah. 40 hours a week so that she can, you know, um, maintain her, her responsibilities and her income. Mm -hmm. um, we also believe in good solid contracts for nannies and mm -hmm. families it really helps to kind of create a foundation and health for the placement yeah. so that both parties have a good expectation of what the placement is going forward mm -hmm. um, so we use an industry standard contract that we've created that really supports both the nanny and the family mm -hmm. um, we're really big on helping nannies in the community um, we're getting ready to do a big nanny um, community uh, team building um, fun taco party and DJ and yeah. uh, free headshots and resume building workshop for mm -hmm. nannies in the community Communities. So we really do. Is that event coming up soon? It is. Is it open up. to the public? And it they is. Can, it's yeah. open to the public. Yeah. Anybody who is a currently a nanny or interested in being a nanny, mm -hmm. it's on April 27th at 11 oh, a.m. So anybody's cool. welcome to reach out if they're interested in coming to that. Yeah. And we'll have free headshots, resume building, um, all kinds of uh, fun icebreaker games for the nannies. You know, nan nannying is is kind of a a tricky industry because mm. you're all day alone with children and you're not really meeting coworkers or out and about in the community so it's mm -hmm. an opportunity for nannies to make friends with each other yeah. maybe set up some play date play dates with their nanny families and just feel be around people that are going through maybe some of the issues and concerns and challenges that they go through right? absolutely yeah mm -hmm. that's so wonderful and it's nice that we get a chance to kind of promote that and let people know absolutely that you know they want to be part of this and you know let's let's talk a little bit about your role as an entrepreneur and as a woman and running this business you know I mean it, it looks like you're doing amazing, but I'm sure you run into challenges too on well, a daily basis. You know, I was, uh, my, my background is in child psychology, so mm -hmm. I do, you know, I'm very thankful for my education here at UNLV that was yeah. able to, you know, give me a good foundation and basis. Um, and like I said, my parents were just so instrumental in watching and growing up at their knee and watching them in the business at how they would solve problems and how they would handle things and how they would give back in the yeah. community. Um, so I had really good role models that were able to make me the, you know, the businesswoman that I am today. Um, and you know, I really, I, I love my business, and I believe in helping families. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're passionate about something, you know, you you really you, you don't really work as hard as you as yeah, you might otherwise. Yeah, because you're just loving what you do. Absolutely. And you learned that obviously. What was the, what do you think? I mean, your mom has given you so much, right? Including this business. But what do you think was the biggest lesson that you took away from her that keeps this business going until today? Oh my goodness, my mom was just so fair. She mm -hmm. was just so fair, and she really listened to each family and their concerns. She didn't treat families like they were a number mm -hmm. or that this was just something to uh, be able to, to to monetize. She really, she, she cared. And I know yeah. that sounds kind of cliche, but it was, you know, seeing that and seeing her, you know, spark joy when she was able to help a family and find them the perfect nanny. Um, I, I just, I wanted to follow in her footsteps. I wanted to do the same thing. Yeah. And that's the biggest, most rewarding thing is that when I I, you know, a family comes to me and I'm like, wait, I have the perfect person for you, yeah. you, you know, because nannies really, it's an intimate setting and they mm. do groove in and they do become part of the family like no other position. They're in your home 40 hours a week, yeah. you know, with your kiddos, your, you know, your, your, your pride, pride and joys. Mm. So um, it's, it's definitely a different industry. Yeah. And, you know, and you, and this has been around again, we're talking to Sarah Cook, the president of Nannies and Grannies, been around since 1987. What's next? What do you see? I mean, obviously now you said you're, you're expanding your education, right? And uh, what else are you looking forward to doing in the next five years? Well, we've opened up our core services quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we childcare has always been our bread and butter, and it always will be my biggest passion. But we realized that there was a domestic need for other services, mm. so we've really added to our core services. Um, we provide families with housekeeping assistance, um, estate managers, butlers, chefs, um, pet sitters, wow. elder care, yeah. um, even courier services or delivery services. Wow. So we really have kind of taken on the motto: if you can dream. It, we can do it mm -hmm. and we get a lot of interesting requests so um, I 
think families are going to start to recognize nannies and grannies as a full domestic umbrella mm. that, rather than just child care. Yeah, I love that. And we wanted to pull up, um, before we go here, the information where people can reach out if you're interested. And like you said, it's not just babysitting, right? You do all kinds of services at nannies and grannies. So we have the address right there. And then people can email you, right, at info at nannyforyou.com? They sure can. And we love getting those good old-fashioned phone calls. So 702-364-4700. We'll get on the phone. We can chat. We can do a custom qu consultation with you about your needs. And this is uh, seven days a week, 24-7, right? Your services yep. just don't stop, we especially don't stop. when you work with um, in the hospitality world, 24-7. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're 24 hours, seven days a week. Awesome. Sarah Cook, well, uh, congratulations to you. What a great business and what a legacy to both of your parents for starting this so many years ago and you maintaining this and making this a successful women-run business right here in Southern Nevada. Thank you, Petrani. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be here today. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for watching and listening to this episode of Entrepreneur Showcase Series. And we'll see you again next time.